All right, guys, working on the Yamaha YSR50 again. Been quite a while since we looked at this project, but I finally got a pressure vac tester, which is what this instrument is right here. And we got some block off plates made for the intake. Uh, Spark was pretty handy on, on getting that fixed up for us. Basically just cut a little chunk of aluminum out, uh, a cork gasket, cork gasket, with the same bolt pattern as the carburetor would mount to. Put some bolts in with some larger nuts to take up the space because you don't have the reed block in there. We took the reed block out. We did find on the reed block though that the reed pedals had a huge gap in them. So we flipped them because it looked like maybe somebody put them in backwards. So you can see now the reeds are closed um, before they had a big gap in them. So what we do on a pressure vac test is you pressure check it up to about seven to eight PSI. Um, you can also vacuum check it to about that same area, but it's gonna be in what, inches of mercury they call vacuum. Yeah. Uh, you don't wanna go more than 10. You wanna be about that seven to 10 or 0.5 bar-ish. Inches of HG? Yeah. Yeah, HG. So as long as you don't vacuum check it and leave it, guys, you always wanna do pressure last. Uh, otherwise, there is a chance that the seals could get damaged or whatnot. Um, but I'll show you a little demonstration here. We have some leaks from our block off plate, the gasket. We just used the original gasket on the reed block area, and that is leaking a little bit. You use soapy water and a little spray bottle like this, and you spray around. If you have a drop in pressure or vacuum, spray around anything that seals, base gasket, uh, crankcase split line, uh, intake area, and then if you still don't get any leaks, then you might have to take off side covers and you might have a crank seal that's leaking. Usually crank seals are gonna leak down pretty fast. Uh, ours was holding pressure for the most part. It would drop about a half pound every minute or so. And I believe it's because our severe leak at our block off plate, we just haven't resealed it up yet. For the exhaust, we use what's called a freeze plug expander yeah. or something like that it's called. So uh, it's, a it's a rubber plug that's got a threaded nut here. As you tighten it, it actually expands that rubber and that's fitted inside the exhaust port here. Uh, so that's sealed up good. You get them at different sizes. I wanna say there was what, five, six different sizes at O'Reilly's uh, is where we got these. But that's what I recommend for plugging the exhaust, especially on a motorcycle dirt bike application. And then this leak down tester or pressure vac tester, I think I got an Amazon. Amazon or eBay. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can get one. It was pretty inexpensive. I think it was like uh, 40 or 50 bucks maybe. It came with, well, all that stuff there, a bunch of adapters. And we have it plumbed into where like the, uh, I think that's the oil injection port with a little adapter. And I'll try to pump it up here on camera. It's gonna pump it quite a bit. Get it pumped up. So they're about five pounds-ish, six pounds. And if Mark takes his soapy water, he'll spray right around our block off plate and you can see it'll bubble up. Through that bolt there. So that's why I said where ours is leaking. See a little bit of bubbling there. Oh yeah, she's coming over So on the bottom as well. But that's basically our doing. Oh, that's not the engine's fault, so. And the way it's holding pressure, pretty pleased with the health of the engine. We checked underneath, you know, crankcase split line, base gasket. We did do the left side crank seal, and I highly doubt that's leaking anymore. So I'd say in my mind, the engine is healthy. I think maybe most of our cause was those reed pedals being flipped, uh, having that huge gap. Reeds will make it run rich if they have a gap like that, and you get some spit back. So. We're gonna try that, put this thing together, but I wanted to make a quick little video on uh, this little pressure vac testing setup. And like I said, do vacuum before you do pressure. Um, as long as you don't do vacuum last and leave it, that's usually best. So leave an early good example of what a, so sm a smaller leak would look like, a lot of small bubbles. Yep. Might take a bit too. So you can see that's from our block off, right where our gasket is. I don't think it's coming from the crankcase split line there, right? No, you can see it's coming from under, right okay. in the middle. Gotcha. I think it's kind of I think yeah. if you put a cork gasket in yep. there, that would be... Like I said, we're using cork gasket here, guys, where it's less leakage. There's really no leakage here. It's just yeah. around our bolt. 
Um, and that's where you get the gasket material where you cut it out and punch your own holes. Super handy to have around. Wouldn't but, suggest using it. No, no, just for testing. Stuff like this. And there's been yep. some stuff where we couldn't get a gasket. So we're still holding some pressure. You can see it is leaking down, but we do have that leak there. Um, nothing severe. You want to have it hold for at least, I'd, I'd say 30 minutes is ideal on a really good engine. Um, if it'll hold the same pressure for 30 minutes, you got no leaks and you're good to go. If it's leaking sooner than that and it's not your test equipment, you got a leak somewhere and you got to find it. So cheap little setup. This whole thing with the pressure tester and all our adapters costs us probably 60 bucks. Um, and it's universal. We can make it work on other things. So now we're going to fix her up and see if it'll run.